Okay, um, we are going to just complete the um, oxytocin discussion. Um, we know that um, the way oxytocin is dosed was described in the previous um, lecture. So we know that uh, for augmentation of labor, Or induction of labor we have to start at a low dose we have to start somewhere in our setup maybe around 2.5 milli international units per minute that is how oxytocin is dosed um, then we can increase this dose to usually a maximum of 20 milli international units per minute uh, for postpartum hemorrhage, um, we might need to start around 20 milli international units per minute. We can go up to 60 milli international units per minute. We need to remember that once we exceed 40 Mainly international units per minute. We remember that the structure of oxytocin only differs with um, vasopressin by two amino acids. So its vasopressin-like effects um, start to set in. So the patient starts to retain fluid. Urine stops coming out because of its antidiuresis effect. And the patient can have brain edema. And water intoxication. That's why it's advised that the total dose that you give a patient should not exceed 30 to 40 international units in 12 hours. So that is about um, the dosing for oxytocin. We know the other basics are for um, uh, for Amstel, which is active management of the third stage, you can give five international units, IV, bolus. You just don't give it too quickly because you end up with hypotension. Um, you can give 10 international units, IM. We know that you can't give oxytocin orally because it's a protein and it will be broken down by the stomach um, digestive protein enzyme, so it won't go anywhere. So that's about the dosing. Now, how do you administer this 2.5 million international units, 20 million international units per minute that we've been talking about? So you need to know three basic things. The first thing you need to know is um, the giving sets. You know those giving sets we are using to administer fluid in labor ward? You need to check what is written on them. So the ones that we have right now, they say that 20 drops per, 20 drops, if you give a patient 20 drops, what you've given them is one meal. Those are the giving sets that we have. So make sure that you check um, before you use a giving set for oxytocin administration, just check what the giving set says. Some giving sets will tell you that 15 drops is equal to one meal. So again, stress is that you check uh, the particular giving set that you're giving. Then we know also that the vials of oxytocin we have on labor ward are 10 international units vials. And sometimes we have 10 international units vials. You notice that this is not 10 milli units vials. This is 10 international units and five units. So those are the vials you have. So you need to remember that 1,000 milli international unit is equal to one international unit. That's just um, a conversion. So if you have five international units of oxytocin, like the one we give uh, IV for active management of the third stage, it means that what you have is 5,000 milli international units. So this conver uh, conversion is um, 
really important. So we have this conversion method, then we have the giving sets, then we have uh, the vows that we have. So now, the next thing, and then uh, the last part of this is that our fluid bags. In Labawad, sometimes we have 500 mils, normal saline. Sometimes we have one liter, normal saline. This is the basic and we all know. So we have all that. So now, when you dilute, what you want to do is to say, let's start with first liter. In the first liter, I'm going to put 2.5 international units in one liter. This means that what I have is 2,500 milli units in one liter or in 1,000 mils. That's what I have, which means that what I have here is 2.5 milli international units per mil. So I have diluted this 2.5 international units. I've put it in 1,000 mils of normal saline. Usually we use normal saline. Uh, Ringers lactate in our labels, but you can use dextrose if you don't have these other fluids, but normal saline is the preferred uh, fluid. So this is what becomes the concentration of uh, this oxytocin. Let me give another example. So sometimes we you can see that in labels we would put five international units in one liter, which is in 1,000 mils. So it means that what we have here is 5,000, which is the same as five international units. You have 5,000 milli international units. You have put that 5,000 in 1,000 mils of normal saline. It means that if you get these zeros away, it means that what you have is five milli international units per mil. Meaning that if you give one mil of normal saline with this concentration, if you just open the drip and give one mil, which for the giving set we are using is 20 drops, you give 20 drops. If you had put five international units in one liter, what you're actually giving after you give those 20 drops is five milli international units. It's the same. This is usually the third concentration is the one we usually would use for postpartum hemorrhage or molar pregnancy. So we would put 20 international units in 1,000 mils or in one liter. So this means that we have 20,000 milli international units in 1,000 mils. You just get the zeros away. So what, means, what this means is that the concentration of this uh, fluid here is 20 milli international units per mil. So if you just give one mil of this fluid where you've, dilute, you've diluted 20 international units of oxytocin into um, 1,000 mils, which is one liter, what you're ending up, the concentration you're ending up with is 20 milli units, milli international units for every mil. So now you remember that if you are doing postpartum hemorrhage, you usually start at 20 milli international units per minute. That's the dose. So it means that you have diluted your oxytocin in this manner because this is now postpartum hemorrhage. You want that uterus to contract. So what you are doing is that you are putting, you've diluted your oxytocin like this. This is the concentration. So if you give 20 drops per minute, it means that because 20 drops per minute means one mil per minute. And one mil per minute means 20 milli international units given. Because you are giving one mil in one minute, which is 20 drops, it means what you've given in that one minute is 20 milli international units. So that is the dose. If the uterus does not contract, you can double this dose uh, to 40 milli international units per minute. You remember that when you were giving 20 drops per minute, which is equal to one mil per minute, which is equal to 20 milli units, milli international units per minute. If you want to give 40 milli units, milli international units per minute now, you have to just double the rate, which means you go to 40 uh, drops per minute. 
and so on and so forth. Depending on the amount of um, oxytocin that you want to give the uterus contracts, then you can, um, you know, uh, keep the oxytocin dose at the rate at which uh, the uterus has um, contracted. Um, that is that. Then when you are augmenting the labor, so we are talking about augmentation. So you are starting at 2.5 milli international units per minute. So you've um, diluted five international units. You've put it in 1,000 mils, meaning that you have 5,000 milli international units in 1,000 mils. What this means is that you have 5 milli international units per mil. That's your concentration. Now you want to give this patient 2.5 milli international units per minute. That's the dosing you want to start with because you're augmenting labor. This is a para three gravida four. Now you're augmenting labor. So it means that since you know that 20 drops per minute is equal to one mil. So if you give 20 drops per minute, it means it's got, this is one mil per minute, which is the same as five In this, in this um, particular case, if you give 20 drops per minute, it means you are giving 5 milli international units per minute, but you don't want to give that dose. You want to start low at 2.5. So it means that you start at 10 drops per minute. And you continue at that rate at 10 drops per minute. If you are not happy with the contraction, you can double this dose. So you move to 20 drops per minute. So when you move to 20 drops per minute, your dose is now 5 milli international units per minute. And you know you increase this dose every 30 minutes until you reach a point at which you are happy with the contraction or until you reach the maximum dose. So at 20 drops, we are at 5 milli international units per minute. If you are not happy with the contractions, you can move to 40 drops per minute. 40 drops per minute means that you've doubled the dose again. So you're at 10 milli international units per minute. If you're not happy with this dose, you can double it, this 10 uh, milli international units per minute. You can double it, you go to 80 drops per minute. And that will be 20 uh, milli international units per minute. And you remember that this is really the maximum dose we want to give for augmentation of labor. And you should also notice that we are giving a lot of fluid now. 80 drops per minute, 80 drops per minute. This is a lot of fluid. So sometimes you want to give less fluid to a patient. So you have um, a heart disease patient who's in failure. You don't want to give all this fluid every minute. You have a patient with preeclampsia. We know that patients with preeclampsia have um, a vascular damage, they have endothelial damage, so they are leaking a lot of fluid in the lungs, they can leak fluid in the brain, so you don't want so much fluid coming in. So for a preeclampsia, maybe you should put something like 10 international units, just put it in 500 mils maybe. So this means that this is the same as um, having 20 international units in one liter, the concentration is the same, meaning that you have 20 milli international units per mil. This is the concentration. It's almost like the one for PPH, but it means that when you're augmenting labor in a heart disease in a preeclampsia patient, you still need to start at 2.5 milli international units per minute. So you know that if you give this patient 20 drops, we are using the same giving sets, 20 drops you've given already, 20 um, milli units. If you give 20 drops per minute, then you are giving 20 milli international units um, uh, per minute. So that's not what you want. So the, the rate needs to be reduced to get to 2.5 milli 
uh, units per minute. So now what you have there is 20. If you have the rate, you go to 10 drops per minute, what you have is um, is half the rate. So it will be 10 uh, mil international units per minute. If you go to 5 drops per minute, you have 5 mil international units per minute. So you can see that at 5 drops per minute, you're already giving 2.5, or is it 5 um, milli international units per minute. So it means you're giving very little fluid, but the amount of oxytocin that you're giving is enough. You're already at 5, at 5 drops per minute. So this is a way to play around with the concentrations and play around with the numbers so that you use appropriate amounts of fluid. So if a patient needs a bit more fluid, you can use a very dilute oxytocin. If a patient needs less fluid like heart disease and a preeclampsia patient, you can just increase the amount of oxytocin in the fluid or reduce the amount of fluid, like use a 500 instead of a 1 liter, so that then when you administer the oxytocin, you will be administering it with less fluid, but you'll still be giving the same amounts that achieve uh, what, uh, what you want to achieve. So that was um, about dilutions that are needed uh, when you do um, oxytocin administration.